Hello and welcome to part three of the basic trigonometry series. Part one was an introduction to basic trig. In part two we solve various problems using trigonometry and Pythagoras' theorem. And here we're going to look at further applications of basic trigonometry and Pythagoras' theorem. Essentially this presentation will introduce some new terminology which applies to the questions and also we'll be solving problems that involve generating simultaneous equations using the basic trig ratios. Obviously the applications and the problems we're going to consider here are more complicated than in previous presentations, so it is assumed you have to seen the previous presentations related to basic trigonometry. Again within the series we'll be referring to Pythagoras' theorem, shown here related to the triangle above. And always remember Pythagoras' theorem only applies to right angle triangles. So here are the basic trig ratios we've outlined previously. We refer to them through the mnemonic SOC CA TOA, which is just a framework that helps us define the trig ratios. So, for example, the sine of the angle is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, that's the SOC part of the mnemonic. The cosine of the angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse, and the tangent of the angle is the opposite over adjacent. These are outlined in the introduction to basic trig ratios. And as far as angular units of measure is concerned, we'll be using both the decimal notation, decimal degrees, and the sexagesimal notation, the degrees, the minutes, and the seconds. Again, for further information about the angular units we're going to use, you can refer to the introductory presentation on trig ratios. So slightly new terminology we're going to consider here. Some of the questions will refer to the angle of elevation. That's an angle formed between the horizontal and the line of sight when looking up at an object. In this diagram here, the angle of elevation shown here, the angle measured above the horizontal that's shown here. And also some of the questions were referred to the angle of depression. That's the angle measured below the horizontal and the line of sight when looking down on an object. So here is shown the angle of depression, and here the angle is measured downwards from the horizontal. Here are a couple of exercises extracted from our notes related to trigonometric ratios. The actual process involved with solving these exercises is very similar to that shown in the previous presentation when solving the problems therein. The only thing that's different here is the terminology. In exercise 3b, the angle of elevation is mentioned, and exercise 4b, the angle of depression is mentioned. So we need to be aware of that as defined on the previous slide. I would encourage you to start the presentation and attempt these two exercises. The answers are shown on the right hand side here in the brackets, but the full work solutions are shown on the following slide. Exercise 3b, solution. We're informed that the mobile phone mast is fixed in the horizontal terrain and we're told that at 50 metres from the base of the mast, the angle of elevation to the top of the mast is 32 degrees. We've got to find the height of the mast. Here's our solution given, the angle of elevation shown above the horizontal and we're given the 50 metre distance away from the base of the mast. Again, as with our previous solutions, the first thing we need to do is to define the sides of the triangle. So given this angle of 30 degrees, this would be the opposite side for the triangle. This would be the hypotenuse, always the longest side, always opposite the right angle. And therefore the 50 meters must be the adjacent side of our triangle. So this is the right angled triangle we're considering in this particular exercise. I'll let you work through the solution shown here at your own pace. Essentially we're using the tangent ratio, we're given the angle 32 degrees, so tan of 30 degrees is equal to the opposite side, in this case that's labelled as h, and that's divided by the adjacent side, which is 50 in this case. Simply rearrange the equation to find height h, which is 31.2 metres. Exercise 4b is the solution. The angle of depression of a boat which is viewed at a particular instance 
from the top of a lighthouse 30 meters high is 35 degrees. We assume that the lighthouse is located at sea level. We've got to find the distance of the boat from the base of the lighthouse at this instant. So in this particular case, we have an angle of depression below the horizontal here and it's 35 degrees. So in this particular exercise, this is my right angled triangle that I'm considering. There's the boat here. And here's the right angle of the triangle. We need to label the sides of the triangle, given the angle 35 degrees here, then the opposite side is this side of the triangle, which is the 30 meters in this case. This would be the hypotenuse side, the longest side opposite the right angle. So this is the adjacent side, which is the side we're trying to find. And I've called that X in the question. Again, as with the previous exercise, we're going to use the tangent function shown here. I'll let you work through a solution at your own pace. The distance X is shown to be 42.84 meters. Here are some tutorial questions on basic trigonometry, it started from my notes. Question 1b, there's an angle of elevation stated. And question 2 considers angles of depressions of two buoys in this particular case. Slightly more complicated question, a very similar approach in both questions. I would encourage you to start the presentation and attempt these two questions. The answer is shown in the brackets here. Just note that in question 1b there's one right angle triangle to solve, but in question 2b there are actually two right angles triangles to solve. And you'll be subtracting one distance from another to find how far the buoys are apart. Here's a more complicated example involving trigonometric ratios. Example 2. The elevation of a wall from two points one due north of the wall, the other due south of the wall, are 30 degrees and 15 degrees respectively. And the two points of observation are 18 metres apart. We've got to find the height of the wall to the nearest metre. So as always with these questions, we sketch a diagram of the information given. H will be the height of the wall. And the point due north of the wall, which we'll consider here, has an elevation of 30 degrees. The point due south of the wall, we'll draw here, has an elevation of 15 degrees. We're informed in the question that the two points are 18 metres apart. So if we're going to use basic trigonometry, the sine cos and tan type function, to solve this problem, we'll have to generate simultaneous equations. What you can see I've done to the diagram is add dimension x, which relates to the distance from the north point to the wall. If we know there's 18 meters between the north and south points of the wall, then the due south distance from the wall would be 18 minus dimension x. By adding x to the diagram, I now will be able to generate two simultaneous equations and I can solve for x and h. So let's consider this position due south of the wall. I've got a right angled triangle here, and if I'm given the 15 degrees shown, then h is the opposite side to the triangle. The hypotenuse is obviously the longest side opposite the right angle. So that leaves us with the 18 minus x as being the adjacent side. So in this case, we have to find the opposite side, unknown h, and we have the adjacent side, the 18 minus x and the angle. So we'll use the tan function to solve for h. So from our basic definitions, tan of the angle is equal to the opposite side, h in this case, divided by the adjacent side, 18 minus x. Now there are two unknowns in that equation, both h and x are unknowns, so we cannot solve for two unknowns in one equation. We're going to need simultaneous equations. We need another equation. So what I'm going to do now is rearrange the equation to make h the subject. So I'll multiply both sides by the 18 minus x in the bracket. So multiplying both sides, I get 18 minus x. Notice the bracket, I must have the bracket. Multiplied by tan of angle, 15 degrees, and that's equal to h. And I've called that equation 1 here. 
Now considering our point north of the wall, again labelling my triangle, we can see clearly that the opposite side to the 30 degrees will be the height h of the wall. The hypotenuse is the longest side, again opposite the right angle. So x in this case will be the adjacent side. Again using my tangent function, I will write tan of the angle, tan of 30 degrees, is equal to the opposite side h divided by the adjacent side. The adjacent side is now x. Again, I'm going to rearrange the equation to make h the subject, so I'll multiply both sides by x. So rearranging x multiplied by the tan of 30 degrees is equal to h. And I've called that equation 2. So now I've generated two equations from the information given in the question. We now have to solve for the unknown values. Example 2 continued. I just repeated equation 1 and equation 2 from the previous slide for convenience. I've also repeated the diagram. So now to solve for the unknowns, we're simply going to equate the equations 1 and 2. So equating equations 1 and 2. On the left hand side I have 18 minus x multiplied by the tan of 15 degrees. And on the right hand side I have equation 2 which is x multiplied by the tan of 30 degrees. The rest of the solution is basically rearranging the equation to find the unknowns. Well, next now expanded the bracket. Don't forget we're expanding the bracket here. We've got 18 multiplied by the tan of 15 degrees and a negative x multiplied by the tan of 15 degrees. So that gives me 18 multiplied by the tan of 15 degrees minus the x multiplied by the tan of 15 degrees. Right hand side is unchanged. On the next line, I'm going to bring all the x terms to one side of the equation. I'm going to add the x tan 15 degrees to both sides of the equation. So on the left hand side I have 18 tan 15 degrees, on the right hand side I have x tan 30 degrees, but I'm adding now the x multiplied by the tan of 15 degrees. On the next line I'm simply evaluating the expression, so on the left hand side 18 multiplied by the tan of 15 degrees is 4.8231, four decimal places, and on the right hand side I'm evaluating the expressions also. So x multiplied by the tan of 30 degrees is 0.8231. 5774x and x multiplied by the tan of 15 degrees is 0.2679x. On the next line, the left hand side is the same, but the right hand side have added the two x terms together to get 0.8453x. And finally, to find the value of x, I just divide both sides by the 0.8453. Evaluating, that gives me a dimension x of 5.7058 meters to four decimal places. But it's actually height h we're trying to find in this question. So I need to back substitute into one of the equations, either equations one or two. In this case, I'm going to use equation two. So we find that h is equal to 5.7058 multiplied by the tan of 30 degrees. And that evaluates to 3.294 meters. So the height of our wall is 3.294 meters. Now it's quite a complicated solution using the basic trig functions. It could of course be solved using the sine rule, which we looked at in another presentation. But using the basic trig functions, that's the approach we're going to take. Exercise 5b requires a very similar solution to that shown on the previous slide. A surveyor measures the angle of elevation to the top of a large warehouse as 25 degrees. The surveyor moves 60 meters closer to the warehouse and now measures the angle of elevation as 52 degrees. We've got to calculate the height of the warehouse. And there's a hint in the question to use basic trig and generate simultaneous equations. So as I said, the solution is very similar to that on the previous slide, but there's a slight difference in the way we lay out the sketch. Note that the answer you're trying to find is 44 meters. If you feel you can solve this without further assistance, I'd encourage you to stop the presentation and attempt this exercise. However, on the following slide, I will show you the commencement of the solution. Exercise 5b, here's commencement of the solution. From the question, we're given the first angle of elevation was 25 degrees. So for this position shown here, 
the angle of elevation to the top of the warehouse was 25 degrees. We're then told the surveyor moves 60 metres closer to the warehouse and now measures the angle of elevation as 52 degrees. So moving 60 metres closer to the warehouse to this point here, the angle of elevation is now 52 degrees. Don't forget we are trying to find the height of the warehouse. So you can see again we've formed two right angled triangles here as we did in the previous example. The only difference is the way the sketch is formed, the two triangles on one side of the building this time, whereas in the example they were on either side of the wall. If you think you can now solve this problem without further assistance, again, I would encourage you to stop the presentation, try and generate your two basic trig simultaneous equations and solve them. However, if you need further assistance, there is a hint on the next slide. My further hint is to add the x unknown value here. I would now encourage you to start the presentation and try and solve for height h, generating two equations based on the triangles shown. One triangle shown here, and the second triangle shown here. The answer is 44 meters. Tutorial questions related to basic trigonometry continued here. Questions 3b, 4b and question 5b. I would encourage you to attempt these questions. The answers are shown on the right hand side in the brackets. There are hints in the question. In question 3b, for example, it says generate simultaneous equations. Also in question 5b, the hint is to generate simultaneous equations. On the following slide, I have shown the full solution for question 3b for your reference. Question 3b, here's the full solution. From a point on the horizontal ground, a surveyor measures the angle of elevation of the top of a flagpole and it's 18 degrees in 40 minutes. So 18 degrees in 40 minutes. The surveyor moves 50 meters nearer to the flagpole, shown here. And again measures the angle of elevation, which is now 26 degrees in 22 minutes, shown here. We've got to determine the height of the flagpole. Answer is shown here. So below is my sketch. We're trying to find height h. Question 3b, solution continued. What you'll notice here is a slightly different solution sequence. We still generate two equations. Equation 1 shown here, equation 2 shown here. What we've done with equation 1 is rearranged it in terms of x, and we're going to substitute equation 1 into equation 2. So in this particular question, we're going to solve directly for height h, height of the flagpole, which is 53.05 metres. But I'd encourage you to stop the presentation and work through that solution at your own pace. Tutorial questions using basic trigonometry continued. Question 6b and question 7b. And again, we have a hint for question 7b. Answers are shown in the brackets. I'd encourage you to start the presentation and attempt these questions. And finally, I've added a few questions for further fun. I know my students think engineering maths is, is fun, so we've got some further fun here. I like the couple of questions I'm going to show you on the next few slides because they're quite practically orientated questions. For the section below, we're asked to find the total length of the strip required to make the bracket that's shown. So in other words, on an engineering drawing, what lengths of material would you need to specify to be able to fold this particular metal shape. Again, we're going to use basic trig to solve this, but I would encourage you to start the presentation and try and think through how you're going to form the appropriate right angled triangles here, and so solve for the entire length of the strip required. I will add a hint to help you on the next slide. Here's my sort of hint for you. I've shown a right angled triangle here, and because of symmetrical structure, of course, we have a right angled triangle over here as well. 
Given this, we should now be able to find the angle here. And then from that, we can find the lengths required to ultimately find the total length of the strip. I'll let you complete further fun question one. Answer is shown here. Further fun questions two and three. Again, I like these questions, very practically orientated question. Further fun question two, we're given a round bar of 30 millimeters diameter, has a flat milled on it, and we've got to calculate the width of the flat. In other words, we've got to find this width across here. And in further fun question three, it shows a bar which has two opposite flats milled onto it. We've got to find the distance D between the flats. So in other words, finding this distance here. I would strongly encourage you to start the presentation and try and think through these questions. They're very thought provoking. But once you find the right angle triangles required, you'll be able to solve the problem. I will give you one subtle hint on the next slide. Here's my hint shown in further question two, showing how I'm using my right angled triangles to help me solve for the width W. A similar approach can be applied to further question three, but I'll leave them with you for a bit of fun. And just when you thought the fun was over, we have yet still more further fun. Question four. We're asked to calculate the internal diameter, labelled D, in the sketch on the right hand side, of the ring gauge by considering the positions of the three balls as illustrated. So here's our ring gauge shown in sectional view here and here. Here are the diameters of the precision balls 30 millimeters, 40 millimeters, and 30 millimeters. And we're also given this height here of 55 millimeters. As stated, the question wants to find the internal diameter of the ring gauge, this diameter across here. I would encourage you to start the presentation and attempt this question. The answer is shown here on the right hand side. And as a hint, you'll need to use Pythagoras theorem to solve this by finding the appropriate right angled triangles within the balls. Hope this gives you a little further fun. Here's the bibliography used to help generate this presentation. Some very good engineering textbooks here. I would strongly encourage you to review. They've been around for a long time. Very good for engineering technicians. I hope this presentation has been a bit of fun for you. And thank you for viewing.